Lagos, situated in the southwestern part of Nigeria, is the largest capital in the country, a melting pot for all, a city like none in Nigeria. So has its history not been like any in the country. From its inception in 1861 as a British colony, Lagos had always been the commercial capital of Nigeria and was Nigeria's political capital till its movement of the federal capital territory to Abuja in 1990. That notwithstanding, Lagos remains the nerve center of the country. From politics to commerce, Lagos has always been the playground of politicians and businessmen. But lately, a playground, no pun intended, has it been for one man. The great Lagos that we know, the city of dreams and hope, a place where fairness and equity was the watchword, is no longer that Lagos of our dreams. Rather, it has become a mystery how just one man can play the masquerade and the masquerader in a macabre dance taking the populace nowhere but misery, poverty and doom. And yet, he smiles to the banks, enjoying all the trappings of wealth. Who is this one man that is all so powerful to hold down the collective dreams of all? At various times in his questionable and weird past, he could have been known by numerous names and sobriquets like Yakini Amoda Ogunlere, Hamid Shango Dele, Adekunle Tinubu or Bobo Chicago. But he is known and addressed today as Ashiwaju Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the Jagaban of Borgu Kingdom, a former senator representing Lagos West Senatorial District, former governor of Lagos State on the platform of the Alliance for Democracy AD, and current national leader of the All Progressives Congress, APC. With an enviable CV, it is best to deconstruct the real man called Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu in order to unravel the facade he has been able to successfully build with time using several cronies and accomplices. The story of Bola Tinubu can best suit that of an Arabian Nights tale, a modern-day Alibaba and 40 thieves. But you all will be the judge at the end of this film as we unmask the real Tinubu, the infamous lion of Bedillion, the Jagaban Borgu, who arguably is the biggest landlord in Nigeria. The real enemy is the man who stole the city hall. The enemy is the refugee upstart who sees the local government secretariat at Global Road in Ikoi. And collective enemy is the greedy man who bought the old nurse's house at Falomo, the Falomo shopping complex, the Lagos State Polytechnic property at Dojota, the stretches of acres at Leki, the old Strava yard in Alausa, the innumerable beachfront properties long owned by the people of Lagos State, the billion naira Queen's Drive Mansion, the illegal Lekki toll gate, the First Nation Airline, the strings of media conglomerates, the vault and garden symmetry, even the symmetry. Based on the mountains of sustained petitions and indictments for alleged corrupt enrichment while in and or out of office, Tinubu is maybe the most indicted governor in the history of Lagos State since its creation in 1967. Like every story, we will start from the beginning. To start with, it is no secret that Tinubu is a native of Iragbiji, a hilly rural town situated three kilometers away from Ikiru in Oshun State. Bola Ahmed Adekunle Tinubu was born supposedly on 29 March 1952 in the city of Lagos. He allegedly attended St. John's Primary School, Aroloya, Lagos, and the Children's Home School in Ibadan. Tinubu went to the United States in 1975, where he allegedly studied first at Richard J. Daly College in Chicago, Illinois, and then at Chicago State University. He graduated in 1979 with a Bachelor of Science degree in accounting. Even Wikipedia is silent on Tinubu's attendance of government college Ibado, such as the web of lies and deceit that makes the man more odious and dangerous to those who can see beyond the mask. Today, Lagos has a debt crisis, a taxation crisis, an education crisis, an environmental crisis and an infrastructure crisis. A burden placed by Tinubu as governor of Lagos State and further deepened astronomical heights under his godson, 
the incumbent governor, Babatunde Fashola, in a perfectly laid out wheel of corruption. His political career began in 1992 when he was elected to the Nigerian Senate representing the Lagos West's constituency in the short-lived Nigerian Third Republic. In the run-up to the 1999 elections, Bola Tinubu was a protege of Alliance for Democracy AD leaders Abraham Adesanya and Ayo Adebanjo. He won the AD primaries for the Lagos State gubernatorial elections in competition with Funsho Williams and Wahab Dosumu, a former Minister of Works and Housing. The rest is history. He won and became Governor of Lagos. When he assumed office in May 1999, little did Lagos know that they just entered what is traditionally called One Chance, a journey to nowhere, as he took his oath and addressed the good people of Lagos who voted him. Bola Ahmed Tinubu promised 10,000 housing units for the poor, a promise he did not fulfill. Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu has become a personification of what is wrong with Lagos. Just as his word is law, he can do and undo. What started out like an act of drama at the beginning of the current democratic dispensation in 1999 has left Nigeria's premier state, Lagos, as a mere fiefdom of Tinubu who bears the titular toga of the Lion of Badillion. Considering his grip on Lagos, Tinubu dispenses the power and authority of an emperor. He possesses the trappings of a Sicilian-type robber baron or a Roman emperor, foisted on the Yoruba nation. The Governor-General of Lagos State Ever since his inglorious eight years rule as Governor of Lagos from 1999 to 2007, on the platform of the Alliance for Democracy AD to date, he has been accused of being the looter-in-chief who has unleashed the most egregious corruption and reckless looting on the treasury of Lagos State. Even as he hides under the guise of championing democratic principles, various frauds, including financial crimes, have been linked to him, such that he can only be summed up as a perpetrator of diabolical deeds. Tinubu's dubious activities came to the fore quite early during his tenure as Lagos governor. After just being sworn in in 1999, the late legal luminary and human rights lawyer, Chief Gani Fawemi, instituted legal actions challenging Tinubu's academic qualifications, which were discovered to be forged. The case of perjury, which has been hanging on his neck ever since then, is yet to be dispensed with even as he can no longer hide under immunity clause as a governor. Being the questionable character he is said to be, the only response Tinubu could give to the premeditated Lagos House Assembly Ad Hoc Committee set up to clear him of the perjury charge raised against him by Chief Fawemi in 1999 was to admit full responsibility for some of the needless errors, whatever that means. He told the convoluted story to the Kangaroo Committee that as a result of the acrimonious primaries of the Alliance for Democracy in the run-up to the elections, that information contained in both the Independence National Electoral Commission INEC form and the affidavit of loss of certificates was supplied by one of his political aides, Senator Tokumbo Afikuyomi. While the fraud spotted in the INEC form CF01 had exposed Tinubu as claiming that he attended St. Paul's Primary School Aroloya Lagos for his primary school education, the ad hoc committee helped him adjust it to the claim that he attended St. John's Primary School Aroloya Lagos. It was clearly a case of a grand fraud applied to cover an initial fraud because all through the findings of the kangaroo committee, no mention was made of any testimony from any of Tinubu's classmates in the primary or secondary schools supporting his claim. One begins to wonder if Tinubu attended the school alone. In the INIC form CF01, to contest the 1999 elections, Tinubu made false claims that he attended Government College Ibado. The detail was visibly omitted in 2003 when he ran for re-election. Hard as they try, the case has however refused to die as questions have frequently been asked on what has happened. The irrepressible Senator Ogun Lewe had asked then, did Tinubu lie under oath that he attended St. Paul's Primary School Aroloya, Lagos, 
which was not and is not in existence, Government College Ibado and the University of Chicago, the inglorious role played by the State Assembly to aid and abet Tinubu in this grand deceit could only be compared to Emperor Nero playing on his harp while Rome burns. One begins to wonder the hold Tinubu has over the Assembly up to this present dispensation many years out of office. This is easily surmised with events that happened in 2007 after the inauguration of Fashola as governor of Lagos. Never in history has any parliament adjourned its official proceedings and marched to the private residence of a politician not holding public office to pledge the parliament unconditional allegiance to that politician. But that's exactly what happened in June 2007, immediately after the Lagos State Assembly was inaugurated by the governor, Raji Fashola, when 99% of the state parliamentarians rushed to Bola Tinubu's private residence to pledge the Lagos Parliament's allegiance to Bola Tinubu in his then private capacity, with the incumbent governor, Raji Fashola, merely looking on, having been pawned to remain in shock. Overlaying all of this is Bola Tinubu's absolute personal control of Lagos state government. Tinubu has turned Lagos into oceans of poverty containing islands of wealth. No wonder he still bears the appellation, Governor General of Lagos. Whatever that means, your guess is as good as mine. A look at history will do us all good if we are to understand the narcissist nature of the man Tinubu. Tinubu's tenure as Lagos state governor ended on 29th May 2007 and Babatunde Fashola of the Action Congress took office. Fashola had been chief of staff to Bola Tinubu and political godson of Ashiwaji Tinubu. In April 2007, the federal government brought Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu before the Code of Conduct Tribunal for trial over alleged illegal operation of 16 separate foreign accounts. In September 2009, the British Metropolitan Police were investigating a transaction in which the Tinubu-led Lagos state government made an investment in Econet, now Airtel. The federal government rejected a request by Britain to release evidence needed for further investigation and prosecution of the three Nigerian ex-governors in a London court. The perceived web of corruption allegedly created by Shiwaju Bola Tinubu while in power is worrisome even after officially vacating office. By thus, he effectively planted his cronies all over the machinery of governance and decision-making. Taxation is one of the means through which Tinubu has consistently enriched himself with the revenue of Lagos State. This has become not just a conduit of siphoning of state fund, but a tapestry of a grand master plan of corruption by one man. By the end of the tenure of Bola Tinubu, IGR was over 10 billion naira, and now under the governorship of Babatunde Fashola, IGR in Lagos State is over 200 billion naira per annum. Revenue collection in Lagos State was contracted out to private consultants called Alpha Beta under Tinubu, and they still continue to collect revenue under the Fashola administration. But why was Alpha Beta selected as the preferred consultant? Did the government invite consultancy bids for the contract? How many consultancy companies submitted bids for the contract? Considering that Alpha Beta has no known track record of revenue collection, what were the criteria used in selecting Alpha Beta? Tinubu's alleged ownership of Alpha Beta consultant might explain his strong defense of the tax company. To the extent of reeling out Alpha Beta's resume, even when not directly prompted. It's just like my relationship with Julius Berger. <laughs> like any other company doing business for Lagos. And it is extremely, extremely important and efficient. And we are building tenor control from the ground up. They have expected their knowledge in biometric. Institute uh, establishing and a control system and re engineer the finances of Lagos. It is no surprise to see Tinubu rise in strong and spirited defense of Alpha Beta Consultant, his company. From 2000 to 2009, 
Alpha Beta allegedly took 15% of all tax revenues generated by the state of Lagos. In the past five years, it has taken 10%, which means that Alpha Beta has pocketed approximately 13% of our money during the governorships of Tinubu and Fashola. This is ridiculously scandalous in itself. Approximately 1.464 trillion naira has been raised in tax in the past 15 years, monies which should clearly be invested back into the state, but it is not. Alpha Beta is allegedly owned by Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and the company is the recurring decimal of corruption in Lagos. In the last two years, 36 billion naira has been paid out to Tinubu via Alpha Beta Consulting alone. 36 billion naira is a colossal amount of money to pay an individual firm over a two-year period. A look at taxation in Lagos, which is charged at multiple points, will suffice and help us appreciate the maze of corruption that is perpetrated in Lagos by Tinubu and his cronies. In addition to federal taxes, the state government collects shops and kiosk rates, an approved open market levy, tenement rates, Licensing fee for sale of liquor, slaughter slab license fee in abattoirs under local government control, marriage, birth and death registration fees, street naming registration fee, motor park levy including motorcycles and tricycles, parking fee on local government streets or roads as may be approved by the state government, domestic animal license fee excluding poultry farmers. License fees for bicycles, trucks, canoes, wheelbarrows and carts other than mechanically propelled trucks. Radio and television license fee, excluding radio and television in motor vehicles, transmitters and other communication equipment. Public convenience, sewage and refuse disposal fees. Cemetery and burial ground permit fee. Permit fee for private entertainment and merriment in public places, excluding roads and streets. Wharf landing fees, corporate business permit, commercial premises rate, corporate parking within company premises, vehicle radio permit or clearance, satellite and mast permit, vehicle environmental protection, outdoor environmental sanitation agency fees, mobile advert permit, computer use permit, interstate revenue, penalty for seat belt default, computer license fee. It is better imagined how much sleaze that goes on behind the scene. Sensing a cover-up, a Lagos resident, Dr. Ademola Dominic, petitioned the Lagos state government directly on the 24th of October 2012, asking for a disclosure of public accounts as pertain the tax consultancy fee the Lagos state government pays out monthly to a private company named Alpha Beta Consulting Limited, owned by Tinubu. Dr. Dominic, as a petitioner, invoked the Freedom of Information Act and demanded to know how the taxes, revenue, finances of the state accrue, are managed and disbursed in Lagos State, and to access and request to be made available to me by you all information, CTCs of files, records, contract agreements, documents, in respect of the said contract agreement entered into between the government of Lagos State and the company Alpha Beta Consultant Limited, pursuant to Section 23, Subsection 3M, 0, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 10 of the Provisions of the Freedom of Information Act 2011 FOI. According to Dr. Dominic's petition for account, the government of Lagos State boasts of internally generated revenue of about 40 billion naira every month translating into a commission of 6 billion naira being paid to Alpha Beta Consultant Limited also every month, which some I consider unfavorable and outrageous to me as a taxpayer and citizen of Lagos State. In public eyes, the offending company Alpha Beta Consultant Limited is putatively owned by Alhaji Bola Tinubu, who handpicked Babatunde Fashola in 2007 as the Action Congress governorship candidate in Lagos by riding roughshod over the party's constitution's requirement for a sensible primary election. And the Lagos state government's response of November 5, 2012, to the petitioner merely reinforces the state's stance to treat Lagos' finances as personal funds. 
It is also on records that Alpha Beta Company was blacklisted by the Abuja Environmental Protection Board, AEPB, for failing to render account of the fees it collects on behalf of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, in respect of solid and liquid waste bills from residents in the territory. The Tinubu's firm was contracted in 2009 by the FCT administration under the then minister, al Haji Adamu Alieru, to be responsible for waste management fees. The rest is history. As it is, Lagos's medium-term future is in doubt, not least because its future taxes cannot be raised from the millions of illiterate and unskilled youths who will rather likely press violently for free social services to further tie up the state's finances already hobbled by over $500 million debts. In Lagos, land and real estate is gold. Here, Tinubu is believed to have effectively fleeced Lagos, allocating land for himself and his cronies. This area has been the gold mine for years and still remains one. It needs to be recalled that in 2007, a group called the Lagos Progressive Movement fingered Tinubu in a huge land scam running into several billions of Naira in Lagos State. In a public statement on the matter, the group had noted, we, the Lagos Progressives Movement, once again wish to update fellow Nigerians on the various land scams perpetuated by former Governor Bola Tinubu and being covered up by Governor Babatunde Fashola. The facts are true and verifiable. We have gone further to quote real names of collaborators and addresses of properties for readers to verify themselves. Tinubu is the number one landlord in Lagos and has turned Lagos land worth trillions of naira into his personal possession to be used freely or given away unaccounted for. Even after he left office, Tinubu continues to illegally appropriate and allocate Lagos land under the watch of Fashola. Curiously, Tinubu still occasionally signs certificates of occupancy even as ex-governor and backdating them to the period he was in office. These brazen acts of corruption are alleged to have been perpetrated with the active collaboration of select few public officers who are obscenely wealthy at the expense of Lagos taxpayers. His accomplices in the fraud are Benga Ashafa, former permanent secretary, Lands Bureau, since 2001, and servant senator Mrs. Awofi Shayo, former permanent secretary and a relation of Paula Tinubu, from Iragwiji Oshun State. Hakim Murio Kunola, former personal assistant PA to Tinubu and now permanent secretary, Ministry of Lands. Mrs. Nikia Animashan and Tunji Olowolafe, who was arrested by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC and detained for three days and later released following the allegations of financial impropriety. Here is a catalogue of some of a few brazen acts of alleged corruption committed, levelled by numerous quarters against Tinubu and supposedly aided by Fashola. It is believed that Tinubu's greed and primitive acquisition tendency knows no bound. In fact, it is believed that Lagos land personally appropriated by him is worth over 500 billion naira, and this is growing because he hasn't stopped. This makes Tinubu Nigeria's single largest landlord. 1. 4 Oyinko Abayomi Drive, Ikoi, a five-bedroom detached house on one acre of land and originally the Lagos State Governor's guest house since 1979, but which now belongs to Tinubu. The certificate of occupancy of the property valued at 450 million naira was signed and released to him by Fashola in 2007, shortly after he assumed office. 2. Tinubu's residence at 26 Badilian Road, Ikoi, valued at 600 million naira. The Lagos state government bought the property and paid an undisclosed sum to Tinubu and thereafter gave the property back to him under the bogus pension bill he signed to law shortly before he left office in 2007. 3. The annex of the Lagos state guest house in Asukuru, Abuja was bought by the state government in 2006 for 450 million naira. But shortly after Tinubu left office, the property was transferred to him under the pension plan he signed into law before leaving office. 4. 
the 250 hectare land valued at about 35 billion naira and strategically located at the Aja Junction on Lekki Road was initially meant for a general hospital for the people of Etiosa local government but was seized by Tinubu and handed over to Trojan Estate Limited, a company owned by Deji and Wali Tinubu to develop as Royal Garden Housing Estate at the expense of the taxpayers of Lagos. 5. The 1,000 hectares of land valued at about 75 billion naira at Lakowe near Abijo in Ibeju Leki local government and given to Leki Concession Company LCC, which is partly owned by Tinubu. It has been developed as a golf course and housing estate by Assets and Resource Management Limited, ARM. 6. 157 hectares of prime land worth 2.5 kilometers on the Atlantic beachfront valued at about 10 billion naira and illegally appropriated by Tinubu from the communities of Sinuwa, Igbekodo, Akbaki, Inibejuleki and given to a Tinubu crony in front, Ibukun Fake, to build a golf course and luxury villa with little or no compensation to the villagers. Tinubu paid $20 million dollars that's 3 billion naira out of public treasury to Fakaye to commence the project in late 2006. Fashola has since released additional funding for this project, which is not owned by the state government. 7. Bola Tinubu now owns the 14 hectare Parkview Ikoi Estate foreshore land reclaimed by Lagos state government. 8. While in office, he allocated to himself the former Strabag Yard beside the Lagos State Secretariat at the Lausa Ikeja. The property has now been developed into a shopping mall, the Ikeja City Mall, that houses ShopRite Ikeja. 9. The choice property at Leki Ekbe Road, on which he built the multi-billion Nara Oriental Hotel and a multi-story car park beside it. In addition is the recreation center by Mobile in Oniru Estate, on Leki Ekbe Road, jointly owned with Arm and Tunji Oloalafe and valued at over 25 billion naira, were obtained without paying a cover to the Lagos state government. Tinubu, under Fashola's watch, sold the following prime Lagos properties to their personal friend and front, Prince Dipo Eludoi, at very ridiculous prices. 1. The 3.8 hectare of land of Lagos State Fisheries Office in VI, besides the Institute of Oceanography, valued at 3 billion naira. 2. The fishery land and jetty at Badore, valued at 500 million naira. 3. The entire Ogudu foreshore scheme, initially earmarked for a low cost housing scheme, valued at 5 billion naira. 4. The Ilubinri housing estate, which used to house Lagos State civil servants and judges up till 2007, valued at 2.5 billion naira. 5. The former Julius Berger yacht at Okorisa, Ekwe, valued at 450 million naira. 6. Tinubu raised a loan of 4.7 billion naira on a Koakete project for which nothing was achieved before he turned around to sell the property to his friends Chagori and Chagori and his own company, High Tech Construction Limited, at the expense of the taxpayers of Lagos. 7. Tinubu applied to personally purchase the Federal Secretariat building while in office. When he couldn't get to buy it, he directed Fashola to stop the eventual owner of the complex from developing it. The complex is presently wasting away, courtesy of the Lagos state government. It took several months of horse trading and underhand payments before Fashola could allow the new owners of 1,004 flats to redevelop the complex. 8. Tinubu converted all the plots of land where Lagos Polytechnic was located at Ikosi near the old toll gate. He chased away the Polytechnic in 2006, depriving the youths of Lagos of decent education because of his greed. He allocated the property to himself his cronies and political associates. It now houses TV Continental TVC, which is owned by Tinubu. 9. Tinubu single-handedly sold the prime land on Aboyade Coal, Victoria Island, which was recovered from Soma Lotis to UAC and Properties PLC. The amount of proceeds was shrouded in secrecy. 10. 
Dikpo Eludoin front and fort Tinubu built the estate directly opposite Goshen Beach Estate in Leki area. 11. Tinubu's wife, Remy Tinubu, built the massive New Era Foundation Youth Camp at the junction of Eleko off the Leki Ekbe Express Road with Lagos State funds and has now converted it to personal use. 12. Tinubu owns the Farah Park Estate and the Beachwood Estate, both in Leki. 13. The critical care unit at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Lasuth, in Ikeja, built and equipped with state funds, is now owned personally by Tinubu. He has put one Dr. Sikuru Tinubu, a supposed cousin of his, to run the outfit. 14. Besides, prime land and properties have been used to pay off public officials who are personally close to Tinubu and Fashola for jobs well done or for being privy to sensitive information. Notably, Dele Alake, former commissioner for information and strategy, was sold a whole house on Alexander Road, Ikoyi, where he lived as official quarters at a giveaway price. Raoufa Regbeshola, Oshun State Governor, who was a former commissioner in Lagos, as well as Moise Baniri, also a former commissioner, got detached houses at Ladokia Kintola Street, GRA Keja, for their good job while serving under Tinubu. Yemi Kadoso and Wale Edun, both former commissioners, were sold houses on Iru Close and another location in Old Ikoi at giveaway prices by Tinubu. The list is endless. It won't be out of place to rename Leki Peninsula the Bola Tinubu Peninsula. Indeed, the prime land legally acquired from the Leki Axis is enough to build the Leki Ekwe Road without burdening residents and all the taxpayers with a 30-year concession toll road. One wonders why the EFCC appears compromised on matters concerning Tinubu. If not, how come he has not been charged to court, despite several petitions against him, and in spite of Nuhu Ribado's boastful claims that he had enough evidence to nail him? In one of the governors, we think he took close to about 75% of the resources of the state. One governor took 75% of the money yeah. from the state government? And this is a state that is probably made over a billion dollars in terms of revenue. Or was it the reason he gave his ACN presidential ticket to Ribadu in 2011? It is apparent that there is a deliberate attempt at cover-up of all these alleged nefarious activities by one man. One can remember with nostalgia Tinubu's case at the Code of Conduct, but like a cat with nine lives, he still evades justice. The case against him was simple and grievous for any government official, not to talk of a governor. That you, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, former governor of Lagos State, being a public officer as listed in Part 2 of the Fifth Schedule to the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and having subscribed to the oath of office as enshrined in the seventh schedule to the 1999 constitution on assumption of office, as such engaged yourself in the operation and maintenance of several foreign bank accounts, namely First Heritage Bank USA, Citibank NA, New York, Citibank International, New York, HSBC 177 Great Portland Street, London, amongst others. However, in what many have come to accept as a political deal for delivering the Southwest to the ruling PDP, the federal government let Tinubu off the hook and the matter was thrown out of the tribunal on technical grounds. But for how long can Tinubu evade justice? It will be interesting to follow up on what has happened to the EFCC intervention in the case of allegations of fraud leveled against Governor Fashola by a body known as the True Face of Lagos, which led to the arrest, detention and eventual release of one Dr. Tunji Ololafe, a prominent contractor and friend of both Tinubu and Fashola. He was arrested in Lagos by operators of the EFCC following its investigation into allegations of financial crimes. Ololafe, a medical doctor and owner of Duke's Projects Limited, whose company was used as front by the Lagos State Governor to execute inflated contract, was arrested on Friday, April 23, 2010, after investigators discovered that 27 contracts were awarded to the company from the State Ministry of Health 
and three from the Ministry of Education. Dr. Tunji Olowolafe was allegedly paid 10 billion naira from Lagos state coffers as a front for Tinubu. In the last 10 years, tax revenue has come to constitute about 75% of government revenue base. Yet, the government never bothers to render account to taxpayers in Lagos. In the last three years alone, a colossal sum of 1.1 trillion naira was budgeted by the Lagos state government, with the government itself affirming that it has consistently recorded a minimum of 75% of budget performance, out of which 80% came from internally generated revenue, IGR. This is 30% more than the entire budgets recorded by successive governments between 1992 and 2007, a period spanning 15 years. The total tax revenue of Lagos last year, at the time of making the revelations, showed that tax on a monthly basis hovered between 14 and 17 billion naira, while federal allocations stood at 6 billion naira monthly. This is more than the revenue of seven states in Nigeria put together on a monthly basis. Lagosians, it's time to break from the stranglehold of one man. Tinubu's godfatherism is more akin to that of unscrupulous mafia dons in Sicily. It is more of gangsterism. Tinubu's gangster godfatherism means candidates for public office of his political party are not elected by popular vote, but selected from Tinubu's bedroom in Bodilian Road and then imposed on the party. They are then held under a tight leash by the Jagaban and are required to do his bidding on pain of being summarily replaced or impeached. B.C. Akonde, former chairman of Tinubu's legacy ACN party, declared unapologetically that democracy had no place in the internal arrangements of the ACN. Anyone that is not comfortable with that should go and contest in another political party, he said. APC, democracy or anti-democracy. Nothing has really changed in this stance beyond the fact that ACN has since metamorphosed into the APC. The first test was the so-called election of the chairman of the party. Instead of electing a new APC chairman, Odigi Oyegun was allegedly rigged into the office by Tinubu. Tom Ikimi blew the whistle on Tinubu, insisting he never dropped out of the race for Oyegun, but was forced out because at that time, Tinubu had designs for a Muslim-Muslim APC presidential ticket with him as the vice presidential candidate. Ali Modu Sharif was even reported to have been so incensed by Tinubu at an APC NEC meeting that he threatened to beat Tinubu up. Both of those men have since left the APC. The charade and the selection of a governorship candidate for Lagos was no different. A tiger never really changes its stripes. It was a rehatch of the primaries that brought in Fashola in 2007. Tinubu simply masterminded the primaries. Once the results started to be declared, the other contestants realized they had been conned. They all stormed out of the venue in protest, leaving only Ambode and Ghani Solomon. Tinubu pleaded with aspirants to accept the contrived outcome, saying, You are twelve aspirants, and like the twelve tribes of Israel, you have some differences, but you must remain one and united. It is ironic to point out that the twelve tribes of Israel were not united, instead they split with two tribes becoming the kingdom of Judah and the remaining ten the kingdom of Israel. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Maybe it would not be out of place to remind the Ashiwaju of history repeating itself in the next elections in Lagos. In 1991, the Social Democratic Party, SDP, won an overwhelming 26 of the 30 seats in the House of Assembly election. However, it lost the election of governor to the National Republican Convention, NRC, and Sir Michael Otedola became governor of Lagos as a result of conflict and split within the SDP. The evidence suggests that, no thanks to Tinubu's hijinks, history might repeat itself in 2015 
with a probable loss of Lagos by the ruling APC to the opposition PDP. It has to be stressed that even Tinubu and Fashola have had their share of quarrels in the sharing of their spoils. The arrest of Olaolafe was said to be the climax of the bitter feud between Tinubu and his godson over certain fundamental issues, chief among which is the control of finances of the state. In December 2009, there were reports that Babatunde Fashola and Bola Tinubu had fallen out over the issue of whether Fashola should run for re-election in 2011, with Tinubu said to be supporting the Commissioner for Environment, Mouiz Baniri. Fashola's nemesis, as it were, was his complaint about the huge monthly deductions of over 3 billion naira from the state's coffers every month as consultancy fee by Tinubu's tax company Alpha Beta from the almost 30 billion naira internally generated revenue IGR. This day, December 19, 2009, in one of its articles, sums it up thus Tunji Olaolafe is a crony and convenient front for Tinubu. Sources claim that Tinubu's role in installing Fashola as governor of the state is the biggest hindrance for the present regime. An agreement between Fashola and Tinubu over the duration of the tenure of governorship, as well as the selection of certain cabinet members, paints a vivid picture on the sort of bind Fashola is in. And this bind will continue with the present governorship aspirant, Ambodi, if he is allowed to win the next elections in Lagos. Emperor Tinubu knows how to keep his acolytes under check. For those who might want to claim Ambode might be a man of his own, not under Tinubu. Governor Fashola still remains a case study for the alleged deviousness of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. There is the multi billionaire Badagri Mile 2 10 lane highway built by Julius Berger and the Leki Ekbe Highway, which Tinubu arm twisted Fashola and in short, he got a 30-year concession to build, operate and transfer. For those who know the Lion of Badillion, it's all about the influence of Tinubu. He wants to run the government. He was angry Fashola wouldn't let him. He wanted the Badagri Mile 2 contract, but when Fashola gave it to Berger, because Tinubu had the Leki Ekbe deal, Tinubu got angry. It is believed that this one man, Tinubu, gets all he desires, and he is still not yet done. The alleged ownership of choice properties and businesses by former Lagos State Governor Mr. Bola Ahmed Tinubu, valued at over 1 trillion naira, will rank him the most corruption-prone politician in Nigeria. Such properties and businesses include the Keja Shopping Mall, Oriental Hotel, Renaissance Hotel, First Nation Airline, Vintage Publications, Publishers of the Nation Newspapers, TV Continental, Radio Continental, and so many others. On the celebration of his 60th birthday, it was said he forced some APC, AC and then state governors, the 57 chairman of local government councils and the local council development areas of Lagos State to cuff out 2 billion naira for the event. Though yet to be listed in the authoritative Forbes Fortune 100, Tinubu is arguably Nigeria's biggest landlord. His ownership of choice real estate and swaths of lands running into thousands of acres of public lands is second only to the federal government and the Lagos state government. In terms of direct cash value and return on investment, Tinubu's real estate holding may be worth more than even that of the federal government in Lagos state. Let's pause a minute and ask. How a man who was governor for eight years with fixed salary and allowances could have acquired so much money to buy almost everything in Lagos? Unknown to Nigerians, in 1993, six years before he ran for his first term in office in 1999, Tinubu was charged in the United States of America for narcotics or drug trafficking. Charged before the United States District Court, Northern District of Illinois, in a judgment that was docketed and dated 5th October 1993, the United States government compelled Tinubu to forfeit all sums in nine different accounts in First Heritage Bank, Citibank NA, and Citibank International. In the document titled, 
decree of forfeiture as to funds held in First Heritage Bank, it states clearly in Article A that the United States filed a verified complaint for forfeiture against the funds in the above captioned defendant, Tinubu's accounts, because there was no probable cause to believe that the property represented proceeds of narcotics trafficking or was property involved in financial transactions in violation of 16 U.S.C. S.S. 1956 and 1957 and therefore was forfeitable to the United States. It is alleged that Tinubu might have escaped physical time in prison by entering into a plea bargain and thus forfeited all funds in his accounts which were suspected to have been proceeds from narcotics or drugs to the United States court. Evidently, there is a lot more to Tinubu's dark past that millions of Nigerians are yet to unravel. Yes, there is housing scheme being built within the Eco Atlantic City development, which is marketed as a brand new city that excludes the hard working people of Lagos. A brand new city where many plots of land cost in excess of a million dollars. A brand new city in which 120,000 will live and 250,000 will work, while millions of others remain trapped in abject poverty. The Eco Atlantic City project is reclaiming the ocean. Sadly, it is just pandering to the stereotype painted by the United Nations oceans of poverty containing islands of wealth. It's so